Hello, YouTube. The NASDAQ is booming with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row. Those are seven back to back green days. And what we want to note is that we have not seen a period of more than six consecutive green days going all the way back to 2021. And there is a very simple pattern for us to look at. All we're looking at here is the same pattern we were looking at for the last little bit, where we go sideways, we go down, we start going flat. And then we start going back up. Let's now look and see exactly what that looks like here on the NASDAQ. I'm going to flip back to full candles. I just want to show you that this red day is actually a higher close. And that's why it's uh, turning red, just because full versus hollow. Anyways, if you wouldn't mind smashing that thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. And if you're enjoying the content at any time, please consider subscribing to the channel. So let's look here and see what we got. We are going sideways. Let me go down. We form a W, and now we're starting to go up with seven back-to-back -back green days in a row. And when I look at what people are saying on YouTube or on Twitter or on the interwebs, they're largely saying, I don't understand why we're going higher. Don't we have a debt ceiling talk on Thursday? Answer is yes. Does it matter right now? Answer is no. It matters in June when we actually hit the debt ceiling. If you've never traded through a debt ceiling before, this is called political theater, where... It's a show, right? It's a drama. You never know what's going to happen. There's suspense, but they always pass it inevitably. What I'm looking at here is that we're currently the part where uh, people are saying, man, what the hell's going on? And why? Well, they're probably underexposed. Why? Market's getting greedy. FOMO is building and they're not making money. They're watching their favorite stocks go higher, like Bitcoin, like Coin, like ARK, like GTAC. A lot of growth is going up dramatically. So they're feeling a little bit left out. And the pattern continues to be valid. And the part we're looking at right now, if we go back here to uh, 2020, 2021, we look here to, oh my goodness, we go sideways, we come down and form a W, and then we go higher. Yep. Um, I think we're about right here right now. By hitting the previous top, that is where the pattern starts to complete. And then we decide where we go from here. Ultimately, it was sideways, and that was our all-time high. But until then, the pattern, re the pattern remains valid. Sideways down, sideways up. And as long as we keep pointing up, I'm very, very, very receptive to it. Now I'm just going to bring back uh, all of my lines here because uh, I just wanted to make sure I got them all back. It's also important to note we are above the 50 monthly and the 200 weekly, as we noted on the weekend review. And when we look here to our other charts, like including uh, the weekly chart here, we're currently battling for our primary downtrend. Oops, let's go here to our other other board where we were... We, 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 Blah, blah, blah. We were able to close on the downtrend here, but we weren't able to hold it on the next candle open. Here, we got that exact same thing. I was surprised on the Friday stream when we got over the 200 weekly. Well, we held it on a close. We actually back tested and bounced. S&P also broke the psychological barrier of 400. We're now off by about 2.5 points or about 0.5% to hit our 50 weekly moving average at about 402.84. We also tagged basically the area I'm looking at here at 400.18, which goes back to our July high. So our high of the day is about eight cents above the area I was looking at for weekly resistance. Right now is acting as resistance. So if we look back to our QQQ daily chart, which is really where I'm focusing, what do we have? Well, we got the big bad downtrend, which is what the bears are going to call the impenetrable fortress, right? The whatever, where the big bears are going to come and they do still have the head and shoulders. S&P did break it. It's now above it, and we have a short-term uptrend formed here. So more time on the chart means more significant, but if we're going to move higher, I'm noticing the recipe. So look here to QQQ, sorry, S&P now. There was our head and shoulders. There was the invalidation, and then it just didn't look back. We're battling for our primary downtrend now. This is constructive. It is not a guarantee. It is not a adjusting guarantee where we're going to go higher, but I'm feeling more bullish after today's action because the dip was immediately bought, and the psychology remains strong. People seem like they've never made it through a debt ceiling discussion before, which tells me, uh, listen to the psychology of what they're talking about. And if we're still in the same part of the pattern and the psychology is the same, keep relying on it. I'm going to ask you one more time, please and thank you. If you could please smash that thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate every single one of you. We put out videos every day other than Sunday. So if we think about tech and the reason why I'm focusing on it is because year to date, it's still the laggard, right? Microsoft Red, Google up two, Apple up four. Everything else is like pretty bright green. A little bit of health services down, a little bit of health technology. These things crushed it last year, though. Otherwise, broad-based rally. What do we have up? We got Germany. We got Japan. We got uh, right China. We got emerging markets. We got tech. We got everything up. ARK is booming. 
arc right now. Again, booming is relative to where we are. We're up 3% on the week. All right, let's look at GTEC or the Goldman Sachs equivalent, up 1.2. Cool. So what's closing red? Well, S&P, the Dow Jones, right? Those are closing red, but uh, the NASDAQ's powering up. We we'll note, note the Bitcoin's back to green. Most of the trillion dollar companies did well today. Apple announced some new uh, some new devices. And then the, uh, the, uh, the different ETFs are still holding up strong. We look in the weeklies. They're above their 50. They look fine. We just go through them really fast. Look fine. We went through these on the weekend. They also have daily golden crosses. So I'm talking about all this because I think that people are not receptive to shoulda, woulda, coulda. Should have been aware of the break below here. Should have de-risked as we started going higher. People are still very skewed to bearish positions. When? I was bearish too. We went over the reasons why I flipped on the weekend. I'm willing to flip again if, we, if I get proven wrong. But for now, I'm in the business of making money. And right now, it appears like if we are able to crack this downtrend, that short-term head and shoulders could really bite these bears if we're able to complete a dub or a W, getting all the way up here to roughly 330. That could happen. Am I, is there a Justin guarantee? Absolutely not. But that is what I'm looking at for the upside. And I don't see very many reasons why with proper risk management, if we're already in, that we cannot do well. How do I know? I'm doing well. All right, looking to the heat map, we get that evidence too. What's really interesting too, when you flip over to the options in a moment, is just the ones that are up the biggest so far this year. Amazon up 12.4, and then we got Tesla up by 11. Why? Well, part of it's because they were deeply oversold. They're heavy in QQQ. But also, if we look here to our unusual options, which have more than 100,000 in premium, today we're going to, first of all, we're just going to look here at today, meaning uh, January 17th, to January 17th, just for one day, everyone's getting so excited about the $50 million order for Tesla. What they fail to recognize is that there's more than $10 for every put, every call bot, there's $10 flowing bearish. We look at Amazon, the other stock we just talked about, 165 million in puts bought just today. We look over here to Amazon for calls, 5 million. Whoa, that is really, really stark. Same thing for QQQ, 120 million short, 30 million long. If we now go here to the last 30 days, um, this means what is likely going to be expiring into here. We're looking at orders that are uh, at least worth 100000 in premium, and we're looking at orders that are still not expired. So we note that we have a 1.7 put call ratio. If we now sort these by premium, it is dominantly bearish. I'm talking hundreds of millions of dollars puts. So it's fantastic. It is great. It is exciting when people buy a little bit of Tesla calls, but... What's the dominant trend? It's a deluge, right? It's a flood. $19.3 billion in premium short for Tesla in the last 30 days. Calls, less than a billion. It's less than 5% calls versus puts. What about Amazon? 4.5 billion. Here we got 192 million. So I understand the motivation. Going into Friday, there's not really that much data. We got a couple of Fed speakers, no headlines yet. We got some CPI to Canada. We got CPI tomorrow out of Europe. We got PPI. We got Christine Lagarde speaking. We got the PMI index. But I'm really focused on OPEX for Friday, and that's largely going to be options related. So I'm really curious on how, how hard and how much these guys want to flex because billions of dollars will expire worthless or worth less if they don't manage to dump these things hard. And with Tesla in, in, in court right now, um, I don't know what's going to take these things down. Bad news can't seem to do it. So with that said, I wish you all the best of luck into the rest of the trading week. And if you're enjoying the content, I would really appreciate a thumbs up as you're signing off. If not, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you so much.